Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at worked solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam which will be sat by students studying BTEC Level 3 Nationals in Engineering. Now the document that we're going to be referring to today are the sample assessment materials that are or have previously been provided on the Edexcel website and the document that we're going to be referring to in particular is Issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. The final question in the mock exam reads as follows. The diagram shows a schematic of a heat engine driving a combined heat and power system which outputs mechanical energy to drive a generator. The input energy is provided by a combustion process which uses air and fuel with an energy content of 40 megajoules per kilogram which is supplied at a rate of 0.003 kilograms per second. The generator has a rotor assembly which turns at 1500 RPM and has a torque of 255 Newton meters. The output of the generator is 62.5 amps at 400 volts. Now we have quite a lot of information there, so what I'm going to do is begin by making a note of some of those things. First of all, it says the input energy is provided by a combustion process which uses air and a fuel with an energy content of 40 megajoules per kilogram. Now that 40 megajoules per kilogram is something we call the calorific value. If we were to burn one kilogram of the fuel, in theory it would release 40 megajoules of energy. So CV, the calorific value, is 40 megajoules per kilogram. Every kilogram releases 40 megajoules. And it also tells us that that's supplied, the mass flow rate, is 0 0.003 kilograms per second. So what that's telling us is every second 0 0.003 kilograms of that fuel are being supplied to the combustion process. So what we'll be able to work out eventually is how much heat energy is being supplied every second and the symbol we use for that is phi. So how much heat energy is being supplied to the process? It goes on to say that the generator has a rotor assembly which turns at 1500 RPM. So our rotational speed of the generator here is 1500 RPM. And has a torque, T, of 255 Newton meters. So we're building up a picture here because we can calculate how much energy is being supplied to the heat engine we can calculate how much mechanical energy is being provided by the generator as it rotates and then it also gives us some information about the output. It tells us that we have an electrical output of 62.5 amps and 400 volts. Therefore the current I of the electrical output is 62.5 amps and the output voltage is 400 volts. Now the important thing here to note is that if this whole process was 100% efficient, then all of the energy that's released from the fuel when it's combusted here on the left would be converted to electrical energy here on the right. But there's a number of possible sources of losses in this process. The heat engine may lose some heat energy. We may end up with heat energy lost here. Or not all of the energy from the fuel might be recovered. We might end up with partial combustion and some of that fuel may not be combusted properly. So we won't necessarily convert all of that heat energy to electricity. If we think about the generator as well, we've looked at sources of losses in electrical equipment, things such as hysteresis, but we're also going to get losses due to mechanical friction and that type of thing. So again, we're gonna get losses from our generator. So there's more than one source of energy loss in this process. Now question 20A here, asks us to explain how energy loss processes in both the mechanical and electrical equipment affect the efficiency of the system. Well, our mechanical equipment is our heat engine and our electrical equipment is our generator. Now, each of those are going to have losses. So let's consider the mechanical losses first in the heat engine. And I would begin by specifying what the purpose of a heat engine is. And we can see here that the role of the heat engine is to take heat energy and convert it to mechanical work. So if we state that first of all, 
The purpose of the heat engine is to convert heat energy to mechanical work. And then we can state where some of those losses occur. So we could specify energy may be lost due to incomplete combustion, as well as friction in the system and heat losses or something like that. Now we can repeat that format for the generator. Now the purpose of the generator is to turn mechanical energy into electric energy. And we need to finish by saying what some of the sources of losses might be. So we mentioned hysteresis and we also mentioned friction in the system. And there we have a clear and concise answer in order to achieve the four marks. The purpose of a heat engine is to convert heat energy to mechanical work. Inefficiencies occur due to incomplete combustion, friction and heat losses. The purpose of the generator is to convert mechanical or rotational energy to electric energy. Energy can be lost due to hysteresis as well as friction. So if we move on to part B. Part B of the question asks us to calculate the efficiency with which the heat engine provides mechanical work to the generator. Now for the heat engine, the efficiency is going to be the power output divided by the heat input. Now if you're ever unsure which way round these go, this ratio will always end up as being less than 1. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to take as much heat energy as possible, the heat energy being on the bottom, and we're trying to convert that to mechanical energy on the top. So the thing that we're trying to get to, the mechanical energy, goes on the top of the fraction, and the thing that we're trying to get from, the heat energy, goes on the bottom. Now efficiencies are normally expressed as a percentage, so once we've done that, we'll times it by 100 to get our efficiency as a percentage. Now the mechanical power can be found by doing 2 pi nt divided by 60. And the heat energy can be found by doing the mass flow rate of the gas times the calorific value. So let's just refer back to our question and double check our values. We have rotational speed of 1500 and torque of 255. We have a calorific value of 40 megajoules per kilogram and a mass flow rate of 0 0.003. So now we can do our calculations. We have 2 pi times 1500 RPM times 255 divided by 60. Now it's probably worth noting when we use this formula, N needs to be expressed in revolutions per minute. So we already have the correct units for that. Now when we run that through our calculators, we get a power output equal to 40,055 watts. Power is measured in watts. And what I'm going to do is convert that to kilowatts. So 40.06 will say kilowatts to two decimal places. So now we can do the same for the heat energy in. We know that we have a mass flow rate of gas of 0 0.003 kilograms every second and we have a calorific value of 40 megajoules. Well mega is million or 10 to the 6. So what we end up with is 0 0.003 times 40 million and that equals 120 thousand watts or we can express that as 120.00 kilowatts and now we can finish by calculating our efficiency because the efficiency we said was the power 40.06 divided by the heat energy in and then we're just going to times that by 100 to get that as a percentage and that is 33.4%. So it's a relatively low efficiency, but that isn't uncommon in a heat engine. So now we can refer to the final part of the question. And the final part of the question asks us to calculate the overall system efficiency. 
Well, the purpose of this system, as we mentioned before, is to get electric energy from heat energy. So this time, our efficiency is our electrical power. I'll put P subscript E just as a reminder that it's the electrical power divided by the heat in. If you remember at the start, we said what we were trying to do was take as much of that heat energy as possible and convert it to electrical power. And we also said on the previous question, the thing we were trying to get to goes on the top. We're trying to get to electrical power. And the thing we're trying to get from heat energy goes on the bottom. And we also said when we calculate efficiencies, we usually express them as a percentage. Well, we already know thigh. We calculated thigh previously and it came out as 120 kilowatts. But we need to calculate PE. And the formula for PE, electrical power, is current times voltage or voltage times current, either way around. Now, checking back on our question, we have a current equal to 62.5 and a voltage equal to 400. So back down here, we have a current of 62.5 and a voltage of 400, giving us an electrical power output equal to 25,000 watts or 25 kilowatts. If we go back to our efficiency line then, our efficiency is our electrical power, 25 in kilowatts, divided by our heat energy in, 120 in kilowatts, times 100%. Therefore, the overall efficiency is 20.8%. And that brings us to the end of the mock assessment.